so um, yeah, let me introduce you the the agenda of this talk. So first, I would um, give a, an overview um, about the the whole project and especially the work package where the HPC grant challenges reside. It's the validation and assessment work package. Then I, I have some slides about industrial cases. Um, and then we talk about the, the two grand challenges, the combustor uh, grand challenge presented by myself and the aircraft grand challenge will be presented by Felix Kramer. <clears throat> so here you see the diagram uh, of the work packages of Exaform. Um, the, the core development uh, resides here within uh, refactoring and evolutionary work packages. Um, so the, <clears throat> the actual development, let's say, uh, for this to happen, the developers need to know what are the bottlenecks, how can they improve them, what are the, the actual improvements uh, deliver and here work package uh, profiling and performance will help. So these are uh, the experts who analyze uh, the the performance. Um, now the the key part is missing. These are the cases on on uh, where the performance needs to be analyzed, and uh, here we have the package validation and assessment. So in this package, there are several tasks. One of the tasks, tasks the micro benchmarks, it will be presented tomorrow by Flavio. Uh, this talk deals obviously with the HPC grand challenges, and there are also uh, industrial implications. I will give a small overview on the next slides on on this one as well. So. The idea behind these industrial cases is that they need, as, as the name says, they need to be as close to industrial applications as, as, it po as possible, or be even the industrial applications. And we have um, partners from industry, the observers, who, uh, whose expectations um, we we try on on these expectations. We try to de deliver these um, cases. So the application range is wide, from um, external aerodynamics of a car, of a wind park, um, some volcanic plume, fire uh, fire suppression, or combustion. I also have. Uh, have two cases to show you a bit closer. Uh, the one, uh, this one deals with the unsteady adjoint optimization. Um, the objective function here is the drug reduction. Um, and how, how this unsteady adjoint optimization works. So we have two steps. In the first step, uh, we have a run as usual and unsteady um, run of external aerodynamics um, where we save every time step. In the uh, next step of the process, we integrate, uh, we, we run every time step backwards in a backward manner and uh, calculate our adjoint for the optimization. Um, and so we have uh, we have the uh, uh, the optimization result. The problem here, the bottleneck, is that you need to save every time step, and it's a huge memory requirement. Um, progress has been done by the National Technical University of Athens, so we can already report a compression ratio of 231, and also CPU time reduction. Uh, one third. Another industrial case um, is from the University of Minyo. Um, it's about uh, 
profile extrusions. So as you can see here, some melting flow comes from uh, from this pipe, uh, goes into the form and uh, profile here is being extruded into the direction out, out of the screen. <clears throat> Uh, the problems here are that uh, the, fl the fluid is non-Newtonian and uh, um, the bottleneck thus is uh, inter-equation coupling. Um, yeah, and ideally what you want to have, uh, what is it about? You want to have some homogeneous um, uh, velocity distribution across your profile so that you don't get any in inner stresses. <clears throat> Um, yeah, and now we, we uh, can talk about the combustor grain challenge. So here uh, for the motivation, I have some pictures of a uh, uh, combustion chamber of an air engine, but this also applies uh, to, the <clears throat> to the gas turbines on which uh, the actual grain challenge is based on. Um, on the left picture, you can see, um, um, yeah, this is the combustion chamber. Here's the fuel injector. Um, it comes from from, from this uh, opening, and this opening on the sides, these holes, uh, these are for the air. Air and fuel are mixed here, <clears throat> and uh, uh, what's uh, one of the important points here is um, these recirculation zones, which appear when the fuel is injected. It's uh, it's a concept better known as flux, but also called recirculation stabilized jet flame, and uh, which is also incorporated in the grand challenge. So. Um, the Grand Challenge itself is based on the experimental setup confined jet high pressure uh, done by uh, Severin from the German Aerospace Center. Um, and we run a high fidelity numerical simulation uh, of this gas turbine combustion uh, system. Um, the key findings uh, which should come out of this application are the thermoacoustic excitation analysis, um, which if, if the excitation is too high, it infers the, the whole uh, operation of the whole gas turbine. And also um, want to know about the pollution formation mechanisms. Um, it is a grand challenge. So the case, uh, the largest mesh is quite big. It's 500 million cells. Uh, we we've run it until now uh, with on 33,000 cores, and the production run takes uh, four million cores. So quite some uh, some um, big numbers which characterize the the grand challenges. Um, it's a large edge simulation with combustion, obviously. And the actual setup looks like this. So we have a combustion chamber here. We have a main inlet, and we have a number of uh, smaller inlets called pilots. So the um, the fuel comes premixed with air. So it's fuel air mixture already here, and it's it's a bit richer uh, mixture in the in the pilots. Uh, the velocity through the pipe is 113 meter per seconds, which corresponds to 500,000 Reynolds number. Eight bar uh, pressure in the chamber, and the the flame, adiabatic flame temperature is about 2,000 K. Here I have uh, an animation from the uh, actual run. So you you've seen casing here, and here you see the the flames. Um, they are made, these are actu actually the contours of uh, flame temperature. And if we cut it, we can see a jet here uh, of this premixed pre jet coming into the combustion chamber and burning. <clears throat> um, good thing about this setup is that we can validate it uh, from the experimental. Uh, results 
And it basically, what we want to validate is the velocity in, in several um, slices and the temperature. What you can see nicely here, what I mentioned previously, this recirculation zone, uh, which, which can be seen here above, above the jet. <clears throat> Before I talk about the uh, performance measurements of the of this grand challenge, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the setup um, because it, it's quite quite important. Um, so first, we run the case uh, as usual. This means uh, we fix the tolerances, the absolute and relative tolerances. Um, it means we iterate until a certain pre precision is uh, achieved. And um, the iterations number over the simulation time, you can see here, um, for KB, it's, it's the KVT case, but uh, for this current challenge, it's, it's similar. Um, it, with the simulation time, uh, the iteration number decreases. So, uh, since the solution, uh, uh, converges over time right even even it's an unsteady unsteady simulation um, this is a problem for for benchmarking because uh, uh, you want to be the runs uh, the analysis statistically significant uh, that means you you need actually for good statistics you need to run uh, the whole simulation time right to get an a good average and it's hard in profiling because if you go from one, one step to other, um, a lot of changes. So you, it's, it's not, um, you don't see a pattern there. That's um, why we want to make it reproducible and representative. And how we do it, we, um, we run with fixed tolerances, we measure the inner and outer iterations, and then we average them and set up a fixed iteration run. Okay, so this fixed iterations. And the next one, to make it representative, we define a um, number of time steps uh, for how long this fixed iteration run uh, needs, needs to be executed. And um, it's um, here, here's the formula. So we have for 95% confidence interval, with an error of 5%, for example, uh, we can compute how many time steps um, we, we need uh, to run the case. Okay, so um, we did that and uh, set up a fixed iter run and run it on Hawk um, cluster at, at the Halle RS in Stuttgart. Uh, it has a Zen 2 cores from AMD. It's uh, 128 cores per node and 512 megabytes of free cache. Since open form is memory bound, I also put here uh, memory bandwidth. It's 205 gig gigabytes per second, um, I think, pro, per uh, socket, so per 64 cores. Uh, what we used in the Grand Challenge uh, is PCG for the pressure and Gauss-Seidel Smooth Solver for, for the others. Um, yeah, and that's what we got. You can see on the right-hand side, so ranging from 1,000 cores up to 32,000 cores. Um, the blue line is the ideal speed up. Uh, the two others are the, um, are the real speed ups. As you can see, the most efficient point is here at uh, 32 nodes, um, and the fastest one is 64 nodes. So we did know be uh, better, and we assumed this is the actual performance of open form. Um, but we, uh, the Barcelona Computing Center, reached out to us. Um, after doing some profiling, and they identified a problem uh, which limited the scaling. Uh, the problem was that uh, Van Dries damping computed the cell wall distances each time step, which it, it doesn't need to do. 
and an uh, improvement was implemented by ESI where they uh, computed these distances only once at, uh, at the beginning of the run. Um, and here you can see the comparison. So the green line is from the uh, from the slide before, called here pre-exaform, and the orange one is the uh, exaform improvement. As you can see here, uh, see here, um, if we compare the fastest um, runs, we have an uh, improvement of one order of magnitude. <clears throat> And um, you also can see here that uh, this uh, issue um, just can be seen if you run with more than 32 nodes, right? More than 4,000 cores, um, because these points, uh, they, they coincide. And I think that's the reason why uh, nobody have seen it before. If you want to, to learn more about profiling, Tomorrow at quarter to three, um, there is a talk by, by Marta. Um, before I, I go into this um, large problem, so for the 489 million cells, let me introduce you the, the 3 million cells case. Uh, here we have, um, an, uh, we start with one core and we have somewhat ideal speed up for the cores from two to eight. Um, presumably, it's ideal because um, uh, the memory bandwidth is not saturated and we have still um, the CPU clock rate being in boost mode for this one. Um, then, as we would expect, um, it, uh, the performance per core drops down for when they saturate the whole node. Um, it's to be expected. Um, but then if we go to more than one node, uh, we see some increase in performance per core, right? So um, we, we think that it's better utilization or it's truly the better utilization of CPU cache memory because the whole problem starts uh, fit into the cache. Um, you can see here on the... <clears throat> Above, we have number of cells uh, per core. So it's somewhat 12,000 12, cells per core. Um, yeah, and this effect contacts the larger communication overhead. Um, and for the, for the largest mesh, 489 million cells, <clears throat> we have a super linear, um, super linear speed up. This means that with higher number of cores, uh, the performance per core increases. Um, presumably, it's it's the same again. It's a better utilization of C CPU cache memory, and uh, here we have uh, identified the optimum to be the last point, fifteen thousand cells per core. Um, the thing is. We wanted actually to run it with uh, on more nodes. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, the next point is even more efficient. Um, unfortunately, we co couldn't do it due to uh, I/O bottleneck. And um, yeah, the reason behind it is that H HPC I/O storage is expensive, and thus the number of files is limited. It's also called iNodes. Um, just um, imagine if you had uh, 30,000 um, processor folders on the HPC storage for this, for the largest run, that's uh, no I/O system. Um, it, it's not feasible. So uh, there is a remedy. It's called collated I/O format in open form. Um, it solves part of the problem. It reduces the I nodes, but the downside is that the writing is very slow by the decompose path, so by a serial program. And we were not able to run uh, the whole case within 24 hours, which is which is the limit uh, on the hook uh, for a single job. Um, but we work on this. Um, 
uh, I myself as well, uh, we work on the new I.O. format. Um, it, it should fix both of the issues. And if you want to learn more uh, today at quarter past four, um, look into the talk by Gregor. Um, and last slide, uh, uh, all the cases, I, I pre most of the cases, let's put this is, are uh, already publicly available. So the grand challenge, industrial cases, and also micro benchmarks, you can access it here directly. There are readmes, there are um, guides, uh, introduction, and so on. So please, uh, you are welcome to use it. Um, and now I uh, pass over to Felix, who will talk about aircraft grand challenge. Um, so. Thank you, Sergey. Thanks. Uh, uh, I... <clears throat> just have to find out how to source, how to share my screen with Webex. Uh, I, I believe that you have to stop. Oh, okay, Sergey has stopped. I, I, I stopped it, yeah. Um, is that move to stage or what do I have to? Uh, no. Right, so at, at the right side of the. Ah, oh, there's share, sorry. Yeah. The, the the share video. <laughs> Inhalt freigeben of Deutsch. Uh, 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 perfect. Um, share. Yeah, very nice. Okay, perfect. So I still have some room to. Can't I go back? Okay, somehow the control went out of the window. Okay, here we here, here I go. Sorry for <laughs> for the hassle. So um, thanks, Sergey. Um, so I'm Felix Kramer. I'm from Upstream CFD, and uh, in contrast to 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 Wiki. Um, who is a well-known company and has a long-standing reputation. We're uh, Upstream CFD is pretty new, so I'll start with a short introduction um, of our company and then go uh, further to the uh, Grand Challenge and uh, the steps, how we, how we get there and um, uh, finalize it with a summary. So Upstream CFD, we are experts in high-fidelity CFD uh, with focus on turbulence resolving simulations, uh, aerodynamics and aeroacoustics field, and um, high performance computing in the cloud. Um, we were founded in 2019 by two found by five founders. Sorry, we're based in Berlin in Germany, and we currently have ten staff members. Uh, the mission of our company is to enable the deployment of high fidelity CFD in industrial design processes. In Exafoam, our main contribution is um, test case related. So the first or big one is the industrial application, which is the driver variant with rotating wheels. Here on the right side, um, you see an image from the precursor study without rotating wheels that was uh, done um, in the beginning of Exafoam and was powered by uh, AWS. And uh, the second big case is the HPC Grand Challenge. So, and um, just let me slip in a short commercial part. <laughs> so, uh, we have two important tools uh, that I would like to announce. So, there's the first one is MemeCalc, which is designed for manual and automatic simulation control of unsteady simulations. So, every time you do an unsteady simulation, you have the question to face the question when do you start your averaging and when do you stop your simulation? Um, normally, you do that by rules of thumb or by experience or just guessing. And uh, what we are offering here is a tool with objective criteria where you um, define a pre you, you define in the beginning how accurate your statistics should be. So somehow you define the, the confidence level, for example, of your statistics. And then the tool can run in parallel to your simulation and uh, then telling you, okay, you can stop now your present your your um, your simulation, and if you're uh, doing the average starting at this point, um, you have uh, the optimal uh, or the the smallest error of your um, statistics. 
So this allows you to have consistent statistical quality of your simulations. We are currently working on a cloud-based version that should be released in the next weeks. And we already have a commercial on-premise version, which is used by various clients. Um, the second tool is the app suite. This is, this is to be released open source in the next month. It's a solver independent middleware for massive collective output. It's designed to be user and system friendly and easy to, easy to include in your solvers. So, and the main feature is that it's applying data reduction before writing, which facilitates the post-processing of the huge cases tremendously. So it's somehow located between in situ, in situ uh, image generation and write all um, uh, approach. Um, another thing is that it produces checkpointed statistics uh, so that you can tailor your, your statistics after your simulation to the real time frame. So for example, MeanCalc tells you, you should have started your averaging of your 3D field at that point, you can tailor the statistics afterwards. So you don't have to, to rerun your simulation or uh, do some other tricks. And it also includes some post-processing libraries. So uh, getting back to the grand challenge, um, it's uh, the NASA common research model, high lift CRM HL. It's a test case from the AIAA high lift prediction workshops three and four and is also uh, used in the fifth one, that is the current workshop. It's the half model of a full aircraft in detailed high lift configuration, as you can see here on the right. So um, it, it has a lot of stuff, but not all. So you see the, the slats, the flaps, the fairings uh, in the cell, but there's not, no turbine inside the cell. Um, it's to be meshed with snappy hex mesh, we're doing a wall modeled LES with approximately 2 billion cells. We're targeting actually more than, more than 32,000 cores, but this depends on uh, the problems that Sergey already mentioned, as well as uh, how much cores the HPC centers will grant us. Um, this is all, the, the whole case is to demonstrate the improvements of exafoam um, with a near exascale case in a full scale before exafoam and after exafoam comparison. So, and to get there, we're uh, using multiple steps. So this is the first one. It's a wing section of a high lift configuration. And here are the extruded three element airfoil 30P30N. It's a test case from the fourth uh, high lift prediction workshop, but at a reduced Reynolds number. The IDDS version uh, has already been released by us as a micro benchmark. That is what Flavio will present uh, tomorrow, I think. Um, and you can also find it in the Open Foam HPC committee repository, as Sergey already mentioned. Um, the wall modeled LES version at full Reynolds number is now used to validate the numerical setup. We are using the wall modeled LES library from Timofy Mocha, which is an Open Foam. Uh, or a library for open foam and we all of this is done especially for the bench as a benchmark case for a scalability analysis which is a prerequisite for the euro hpc computational resources so right now we're preparing the application for the, um, for the regular access using the benchmark access on the slovenian hpc center vega in maribor the uh, next step, the second step is the wing body configuration TC1. It's part of the current high lift prediction workshop. We're uh, developing there the snappy X mesh parameters. We're fine tuning the one model LES numerics. And here on this, uh, this image, you see the boundary layer thick thickness, uh, like it was uh, estimated from the runs. And uh, we currently assume that the, the final mesh will be approximately 100 to 200 million cells. And the setup is intended to be as close as possible to the full featured case TC3 so that we can uh, move on very fast to, to the next one, to the next level, which is the full CRM HL with slats, flaps, and a cell. Um, we're targeting Reynolds numbers. So the, 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 the prediction workshop targets Reynolds numbers between 1 million to 30 million in multiple steps. And here for exafoam, as, as the grand challenge, we're focusing on a very large case 
to, to analyze the HPC performance and to, to do the pre and post comparison with more than 32,000 cores. But we're also following a second route that is the participation in the high lift prediction workshop where the focus is more on uh, the quality of physical results uh, and it is a more intensive study and we hope to promote uh, open foam and exafoam in this uh, workshop. The geometry is not fully defined yet in the setup also so there's still some discussion that is mainly linked to uh, since there are also experiments done and uh, so they are still discussing the, the final um, parameters but that should be finished in October 23 and the deadline for the results of this workshop is already February 24. So um, since this is more this is a workshop I was wondering what, what we can offer you so what you can expect from us is that we already have released the IDDS setup of the 30p30n um, alongside this all with a lot of other test cases from the other exafoam consortium uh, partners um, we'll be releasing the mesh of the wall modeled LAS wing body configuration TC1 about 100 to 200 million cells and a running setup with a standard solver with uh, row pimple foam um, since the um, bench or the since the workshop is about the quality of the results we're we assume that the public benchmark results will be done with our low dissipative uh, in-house solver and setup. Um, but that's also for benchmarking actually row pimple foam against our in-house solver and we'll see. And so uh, we assume that it will be with a low dissipative uh, in-house solver. This is all to be finalized in autumn 23, depending on the grant. Um, and then we have the, the warm model LDS of the uh, CRM of the full configuration with slats, flaps, and the cell, the mesh approximately 2 billion cells. We're also offering a running setup with a standard solver, but again, the public benchmark results that we will uh, release or will be uh, performed within, with the in-house solver probably. And that is all to be finalized in January 24. And this is the case that uh, is the showcase for for the improvements implemented during exafoam for the aerodynamic focus. Yeah. All right. Thank, yeah. Thank you very much. So, if there are any questions, I think Sergey and I would be keen to answer.